Hello again, in this episode I will be painting the details of the dinosaur and I'll be using layers. Unfortunately since the last episode I've had lots of crashes and lagging and I think that was basically down to my dinosaur model. I'd forgotten that with instant mesh if you put it to a pure quad based mesh it seems to double the face count. I have experienced that before but it hadn't been that much of an issue until now. So I've gone through the whole process again of retopology in instant mesh and baking out the textures and then filling in the base mesh. So it should be in exactly the same place. The mesh now has 40,000 faces, which I think is about right. Hopefully we won't see so much lagging this time. The problem is, however, when you are building up layers, you're adding more texture detail and texture maps, which is going to slow down performance. So you're going to need a fairly good machine to cope with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new material in my texture slot. So I'll click on the plus icon base color and I'm going to call this details L1 for level 1 in case I want to do multiple levels of detail. Make your map 2048 by 2048 you will need the alpha this time and you will need to go to the color and bring the alpha right down so it is fully transparent and press OK. That brings it into my node editor so I'll show you how to set it up in here. I'll press control spacebar to maximize this screen and I'll zoom in to this area here so I'm going to bring this up, which is my original color, and my new detailed layer, just there. And I want a mix RGB, so I'm going to copy this one across, Shift D, and bring it in here. This I'll turn to mix, and the alpha from here needs to go into the factor. That means, as it's fully transparent at the moment, the bottom one will have no influence. And we're going to make this the bottom one. So it will only influence our shape when we paint on it. As soon as we paint, it will add a value and therefore show us color too. Let's go back to our original mesh. This sometimes happens, you get a slight glitch. I usually just switch between the modes. I've got the same HDRI in the background and no extra lights, so they're both the same. And it comes back when I do that. Now I have found it's a bit glitchy. If I turn the opacity all the way up and go to my actual texture, which is this level one detail texture, and start painting, it doesn't show the transparency properly. So at the moment I can only do this with full opacity. So I'll click on the other one and hopefully there we go, it started to work. And you'll see if I now plug this one into the original, it'll be gone. And if I want that layer, you can see it. So I've undone that stroke and I'm going to start playing with some colors. It's a good idea at this point to save your work. And I'm going to save my texture. So I'll click on my brush to get my workspace back up and start playing around. Because I'm using a tablet, I'm using the pen pressure for strength and I'm just brushing lightly. Oh, there's a tiny glitch on the tail there, that's annoying. <laughs> Didn't ever notice that. I can probably rub that off my textures by painting on them. Now the nice thing as well about layers is that if you've got an alpha on your image you can go over here to the blend mode and go to erase alpha and then you can rub out which is pretty amazing. to experiment with some new colors as well just with a low strength and see what they look like alt middle click will zoom in on an area it used to be alt f but now it's alt middle click I'm getting a fair bit of glitching around this area and I can see there's some issues with the painting for some reason not so noticeable when I zoom out if you do get these it's usually because of the resolution of your mesh or the topology and my topology is not great 
so you can usually get the smear brush and that will help This is running a whole lot smoother since I changed the face count, which is really, really great. So suddenly I feel like he's got a lot more texture about him. And he looks a tiny bit more cuddly and alive. You can also, if I bring this up, move the outliner out the way a bit more, pull this across, and I'll squeeze these in. So I've got a bit more space. Let's click on my brush again to get the brush tools back. If I click on the textures over here and I want to change the texture mask, not the texture, but the texture mask, which is like Photoshop brush heads. So I'll click a new one there. And now it's on brush. I'll just make sure there's texture. So there's my brush, which is the same as the one down here. So texture, texture. And I can now add, let's say, a noise brush or some clouds or something like that. We'll start with clouds. Now you can see what my brush looks like when I change the size. And I can just add some light texture to him. Although this is starting to go laggy now. <laughs> I've noticed you have to bring the strength up for these sort of things. Probably because of the darker spots. You can also use multiply and screen brushes. So let's say I wanted to make some areas dark. I can use the multiply brush. Your brush has to be dark as well. I should have remembered that. Might take my texture mask off for a moment. You don't particularly need to do this because we've already got the cavity mask doing a good job. But in case you wanted to add any extras, here I make another one of my classic mistakes, trying to multiply and screen on a layer. So I'm trying to multiply and screen on an alpha channel, which is not working, which I'll explain in a second. Actually, that was me being silly. Of course, you can only multiply actual color space. So if there's an area that's transparent and I'm trying to multiply it, it's not going to do anything. I'm trying to multiply the original layer, which is a bit silly of me. So you can't use the multiply and screen modes when you haven't got any texture there to multiply or screen. So if I want to do any details, I have to use the mix mode. Or if I want to lighten or darken areas, I will need to combine the two of these together in order to do that. Or go to the dyno color details and start using the multiply in there if I want to. And you can see it working there. So I'll still work on the detail layer for now. This section's at 800% because I don't want to bore you with my painting. You can actually combine layers like a bump and a paint layer. So when you're painting, it's creating a bump at the same time. Obviously, if you're painting a dark color, it will create a bump depending on whether you plug that into a color ramp or not. I might do a tutorial about that as well if people would like me to. Also, it's probably worth me reminding people that Alt middle click is to center around your object not the full stop on the numpad or the period key on the numpad. You can easily switch between the two layers to paint. Just make sure that they are selected differently here as well as over here. You can see they should be changing, which they do seem to be, which is great down here and up here. Still getting that funny glitch though. In a moment, I'll show you how you can combine your layers to create some nice effects. I use my cavity layer to create some nice spots and things. The great thing about having the cavity is that I'm painting over all these things and I can do things like smearing with these details and it doesn't lose the cavity details which are in from my cavity bake. That's why it is nice this sculpting workflow. If you're just painting, you have to work quite hard if you get any glitches like this and you're trying to smear them out and smooth them out. It can be quite tricky. 
Another important reminder would be to make sure you turn symmetry off when you start doing details. I keep making that mistake and then also remember to turn it back on again if you want to do the symmetry. Those things you'll learn as you go along I suppose. But that's something I always forget to do and sort out. Things to watch out for if you select the wrong colour over here. Occasionally it doesn't change down here. So I had Dyn Dino Colour 2, which is my base colour, and I thought I was painting on the level 1 details because it was all selected over here. So you just got to make sure that things are definitely selected as you expect. So it was around this point, as I was painting all these spots, that I thought surely I can use the cavity mask with the light bits to create the yellow spots instead. The only problem is if I do that, it will make all the light bits yellow. And then I thought, well, I can then paint on that new cavity mask map if I duplicate it and rub out the bits that I don't want. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Now I'm going to try something slightly different. You can see that I'm going around painting these yellow spots in and I quite like them, I think they're good fun. But I'm starting to think that it'd be nice if there was a slight tinge of yellow to the highlighted areas. So what I'm going to do, I've got my Dino Cav 2 and I'm actually going to go to that file and copy it. So there it is. I'll make a copy and I'll call it Dino Yellow Spots. And I'm going to try and use this to drive some yellow spots, but I'm also going to paint on it as well. So I'll bring it in. I'll just duplicate this one for now. And maximize the screen and find my file. So Dino Yellow Spot is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to need another layer. So I'll grab these, pull them out, and have a mix in here and bring my yellow spots. I'll need a color ramp to convert this to yellow. So shift A, converter, color ramp. There's probably other ways of doing this, but that's the way I'm thinking of at the moment. I'm going to change the blacks, which is the bit I don't want to an alpha. So they shouldn't show through. And then the whites to yellow. I have no idea whether this will work. <laughs> Let's bring the alpha in here. And pull this alpha up and see what happens. It does actually work. I'm a bit surprised actually. <laughs> So that's kind of a fun thing to do. I've never used the alpha on the color ramp, so that was a nice experiment and it's working quite well, I think. The bits I don't want yellow on are around here and around here, although in a way they look kind of nice. So you can use your cavities as areas of color as well. But what I'm going to do with this map now is paint on it. So back to my workspace. And it should be that if I paint mid-grey, right in the middle, so I can set all these to 0.5. And that should be a mid-grey, except there wasn't an RGB. <laughs> so all of them to 0.5. And now if I paint mid-grey on this, let's just make sure it's selected. I know that's interesting, it hasn't brought it into here. So how can I get that? I'll go into edit mode and bring up my dino yellow spots. There's my map. Back to workspace and dino yellow spots appeared. That's lucky. <laughs> and now I should be able to paint mid gray to delete any areas that I don't want. So these are all a bit too well highlighted. I'm going to use symmetry. Now I'm looking back at this video, I think I should have painted with black, not mid gray. And that would have completely erased any of the influence of the yellowness. 
Yeah, he's looking good fun at the moment. I still need to do the teeth and the eyes, of course, and they'll be quite important to the overall detail. So in the next video, I'll be going through posing the model for the final render.